I got it. He cleared his throat. Get it. Kick it, Ray. You got to say the boys is back. Boys are back in town. Boys is back in town. (laughs) Kick it, Ray. (laughs) Kick it, Ray. (laughs) What's happening, guys? What's happening? Yeah. Weez is out on the sign. Model 2 on there for the cameraman. He ain't calling like that. Little auto tune. You might. Huh? Yeah. He said, nah. Yeah, nah. He ain't doing it. Coach, give me your winner or loser of the week. Man, my winner of the week are the Tampa Bay Rays, man. They tied the MLB record with the 13 straight wins to begin MLB season. Got That's a winner. What are you talking about? What? Uh, what? 13 is 13. Yeah, right. 13 is 13. It's, 13. it's tied a record for a reason. It's yes, a record sir. for a reason. Me and Coach, 7 and 2. Yeah, yeah, we, we lost out here. <laughs> we 7 and 2. 7 and 2. We're seven and two. We're seven and two. The Nashville Stars. Yeah, okay. uh-huh. Oh, Uni, Uni's cold. Uni's cold. Yeah. Hey, no, you know you come on veteran. Sure. Veteran. Hey. Talk to me, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> my winner of the week is myself and by proxy us um, getting nominated for some awards in yeah. the city. Yeah. But getting nominated because it's for podcasting and for entrepreneurship. Hey. Yeah. I so mean. shout out to us, you know what I mean, as a full sport press. Hardest working man in business. Hey, man, listen. With the best best sports podcast in the world, exclude nobody. Yeah, nah, for yeah. sure. You better know take that. It how you want. Trust mm-hmm. and believe. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah, I ain't saying that. But just take it how you want. Are you gonna say that when you win? I, I, I got my speech wrong. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, my winner loser of the week is Demar Derozan's daughter, Dr. Derozan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was, she was down 19 in that game, and you just heard this loud screech <laughs> after mm-hmm. every free throw, dog. Pearson, Pearson. Pearson. <laughs> They went 18 for 36 from the free throw line. Man, and that, that heard screams, man, brought us back. Super comeback. Shout out to DR. Yeah. They had some weird, like, threats and stuff. That's she had to, yeah, that's trash, man. Yeah. But shout out to DR DeRozan. Shout out to DeMar DeRozan, man. You got to raise your kids the right way. Yeah. You have to. That's yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah. You, for sure. you got a roof for your, your daddy. You know what I'm saying? Be a father to these kids, man. <laughs> you gotta be. Yeah. You gotta you be. Know, to be a Please. father to these kids. So many. Please. Kids. Awesome, boy. You should have gone right. You should have gone right. You should have gone You get to a cameraman. Let's, Let's get it. Sport press. Yeah. No layup line, no warm ups, no nothing. We just walking right into the stadium and get into the game. Let's do it. When the beat on, then it's on When our white jerseys on the road Cause how we feel where we roam is our home Leaving these other podcasts null and void The show can't miss something like Tom Shepard and Corduroy's Full sport press, you know them boys Jay run the point, lock for three And me, I crash the boys Weezy told you that it's paid for Full sport press Greetings and salutations I would like to welcome everybody back and some of you for the first time to the Full Sport Press Podcast. <clears throat> the premier sports podcast for the Cosmos Sports Center. And this is your one stop shop for all sports related news and topics. I'm Jay Ho. It's your boy, Big Jeff. It's your man, Coach Lock. Weezy's out on assignment. Shout out to Weezy. Mm-hmm. He'll be back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cameraman, how you doing, brother? Smoking gun. Two guns. Two guns. Get the gat, get the gat. Now the gat is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. You had to find it. Yeah, he but got you it. Found it. Yeah. It took a while. It took a while. <laughs> but he found it. But he found it. <laughs> Episode 464. We're breaking down the first round of the 2023 NBA playoffs. FSP style. Always FSP style. You better damn know it. And you better damn believe it. Kick it off, coach. Best of the week. Talk to me. Man, my best of the week, man, is uh, in 2020, former MLB player Andrew Toles was homeless and diagnosed with schizophrenia yep. and hadn't played baseball since 2018. That's right. And he probably won't play again. He won't. But the L.A. Dodgers continue to re-sign him to a $0 contract every year. That allows him to keep getting mental health services and insurance. It's cold, man. That's what's up right there, man. Shout out to the Dodgers. That's, that's a good yeah. organization right yeah. there. Yeah, now nah, you got to Hey, shout out to the Dodgers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First class organization. Yes, sir. Shout out to them. What you got, Jeff? Best of the week. So, 30 years ago this week, shout out to Don Calhoun. 
made a million dollar one handed throw at a Chicago Bulls mm. game. I saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out to him. That's thirty years ago. Yeah, he, he got his million dollars. They asked him how it worked. Shout out to Michael Jordan for reaching out. They weren't trying to pay him, Jay. No, nah. mm -hmm. they weren't trying to pay him. Mm -hmm. Broke it down to fifty thousand a year. A year was 50, yes, a fifty bands. Yes, yes. yes. Shout out to him. Yeah, yes. stretch it out. Yeah. Long pay yeah. me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Stretch got, it his out. Kid, got his kid through yeah. medical school, doing right. that and everything. Yeah, man. that's what's up. Yes, shout to Don. Shout to Don. Thirty years. That's a long time. That's a long. That's a tough shot. That's why they didn't think nobody's gonna make it. Man, they tried to pay him, coach. Right. They said he played basketball before. They weren't going to pay him the money. It was, it was, didn't do it. Cash in, cash out. Cash me out. <laughs> yeah. My best week is Katr it's yeah. Katrina Carter. Hunters Lane has hired KC yeah. as his new boys basketball coach. Carter, a Hillsborough alum. Shout out to the boroughs. <laughs> Believed to be the first woman to coach a high school boys basketball team in Nashville. Hunters Lane is coming off a 9-19 and season, which went 2-8 and eight in the district. So shout out to KC, a Hillsborough borough, my dog. Congratulations. Shut sure. up. Hmm? <laughs> yes, we're pulling up. Dude, great. <laughs> Worst of the week. Talk to me, Jeff. Kind of piggybacking off of you, Jay ho mm -hmm. um, You know, do better, uh, Toronto. Um, yeah. Making death threats to the mm. baby for whistling at the game. Now, she can't go to the Miami game. Can't go. Can't go, can't go to no more games this year. Because mm. y'all adults is taking yeah. a little baby serious at a basketball game for making noise. Taking it too far, man. Free throws. Yeah. Tell you, man. Fans. Yeah. Excuse me, fans. Name. You know he affiliated yeah, too. You know what I'm saying? They don't know. Big, big, yeah, yeah. Big, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Quit playing. Yeah, that's wrong, cat. That's the wrong <laughs> one. <laughs> Talk to me, coach. Worst of the week, man. My worst of the week, man. So my good co-host calls me the other day and says, "Hey, man. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know you. I didn't know you played baseball out here. I was like, huh? He said, yeah. I play for the Double A mm -hmm. New York Yankees minor league team, yep. the Somerset Patriots. Mm -hmm. okay. His name is Brandon Lockridge. Okay. He so, has my name. He do. Okay. He is of the Caucasian descent. Shout yeah. out to him. He's Shout out a center fielder. Some Pensacola Florida. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon Lockridge. Nah, man, get my name back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> what if you wore a toy coat? That's, uh, that's my really number. Gotta have I got to have him. You got to have him. I got to have him. You got to have him. Get my name back, dog. <laughs> uh, no, nah, we ain't doing that. Yeah. What we doing? That's funny. <laughs> Full of name. <laughs> My dog's still mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> he took your whole swag, bro. I had to tell you about that. Uh, worst of the week for me, man, is Moses Gibson. I wish Weezy was here so he could talk about this with me. A five foot five man who was unable to find a date because of his height. Has <laughs> 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 undergone a painful one hundred sixty five thousand dollar leg surgery Damn. to increase his height to five inches more. Once he finishes with the recovery, he'll stand at five foot ten inches. The surgery involves doctors breaking Moses' tibia and fibula bones and screwing magnetic limb lengthening oh, nails into man. them. He now has a height that he'll be able to find dates. With the lengthening device, he has to wear it three times a day, which pulls and cuts the bones apart one millimeter at a time. Oh my! So, it just sounds yeah. like a bad yeah. idea. The residential <laughs> short man, my uh, my guy Weezy, that was usually sit right there, wanted to see if he would do that at five feet five. Weezy probably about five seven though. Yeah, he not five five. Yeah, I don't. don't Weezy don't care. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying. Some of the short brothers, you know what I'm saying, just hold it down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Be short, you short. Yeah, it is what it is, man. Yeah, for sure. Good. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of people have short man syndrome and they yeah. get angry. Yeah. Anger man. You know, and, you are. and Moses <laughs> yeah. Gibson. He's probably, probably one of those guys. Yeah. He's just talking he's an angry guy. Yeah, yeah, no, he definitely sure. was. <laughs> you check us out. You stretching it out? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Like pause. I mean, you just know what I'm saying? My oh bad. my God. Oh Lord. My bad. Jeez. I'm just saying. Oh Lord. Life is bigger than that. My bad. Jesus. Well, you got to get your date, though, man. You, you could have got you it. get you a little queen. There's yeah, oh, some short oh. queens out there. Tread lightly. Five one queen. Tread lightly. Five one. Oh. Tread lightly. Tread lightly. Why oh. make sure you check us out on iTunes, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, Beyond Pod, YouTube, <laughs> and Amazon Music to catch up on the full archive of past episodes of FSP. Just simply search Full Sport Press. Podcast. Coach. Yes, sir. And Jay Ho. What's that? Do y'all have a yellow box of Cheerios recipient for the listeners? We do. Yeah. We do. This week's award recipient is Spencer Dinwiddie versus Kyle Kuzma. That's it. It's a knockdown drag out, man. <laughs> Battle of the mids. That's it. <laughs> 
Uh, Kyle Kuzma <laughs> and Spencer Dinwiddie officially reignited their beef. The former Wizards teammates had a back and forth, which started in January 2023 and appeared to have died down. However, a lot more has happened since Dinwiddie called out Kuzma in a recent interview. Both players have shared their opinions and some fiery statements about each other. We'll start things off with Dinwiddie saying that Kuz's priorities are not basketball related, to say it lightly. And moving on to Kuz, calling Spencer, Spencer Den Shitty, and who's been <laughs> bouncing around the league like a basketball. Guys, who won this mid-off? Reunited, Man. and you it feels you can't so call good. Him Spencer Den, <laughs> Den Shitty. Is, he was insulting. Yeah, he was. Probably, but, but Spence came out and said, I've heard that my entire life. Like, come on, man. Yeah. You're in, he was saying that your insults are just insults. I was speaking fat. So, yeah. I, 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 to me, Spencer didn't really won because yeah. Kuzma is a fashion icon. He is, he is. But, but he's got to be a little bit better on the court. Yeah. He had a good year this year. Yeah, he had one his best year. He yeah. did. Yeah. But he got to do a little more. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna get his bag for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, but that's the thing though. Having some of those like back and forths, you might mess up the bag being yeah. that. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you sit yeah. on the couch. Spencer yeah, yeah. Dinwiddie is actually playing in the playoffs. Yeah. Even you know, even though it has a lot to do with Kevin Durant and them being in that situation yeah. and Kyrie Irving, yeah. um, nothing to do with Ben Simmons. <laughs> you might <laughs> back and forth, man. Might might mess up his negotiations because Spencer's making twenty million right now. So he good. Yeah, Spencer's Cal's, overachieved. Yeah. Oh Spencer's man, overachieved. for sure. He's done a lot. Yeah. So that's the thing, man. You you only making thirteen million this year. You're gonna get a bag. Somebody's gonna pay or overpay. Who knows. <laughs> But at the same time, man, just chill out. Wait till you get your check and then say what you're going to say. Right. Yeah. Mm. Here, man, we got to get this yellow box of Cheerios to both of the guys. Mm-hmm. We're going to drone it to the guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Drone it to them. Yeah. yeah. Two times. Big time. You guys ready to start the first half? Let's get it. Let's get it. It's your boy FSP Weezy. Join us each and every Monday on all streaming platforms. And don't forget, everything is paid for. The Revolution will be podcasted. Yeah, I know. One. <laughs> <laughs> First half, the hottest sports news of the past week, like we do each and every week here at the Full Sport Press Podcast. Before we get started, I am Jay Ho. It's your boy, Big Jeff. It's your man, Coach Locke. Locke, where can they find you on social media, my brother? Man, nothing has changed. It's Locke underscore the underscore great. That's T H A. Get that, man. Yeah, yeah. Jeff. J Easley 84 across all social media platform. Sure, and I'm Jay Hove on Instagram, man. Twitter, let's talk on Twitter. The NBA has started. It's postseason play, man. Let's have a conversation, man. Rest in peace, Rasheed. This is the best time of the year. Mm-hmm. Me and Rasheed would go crazy yeah. on the Twitter sphere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We always had a hot take about James Harden, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was cold take. <laughs> Shout out to Rasheed. But yeah, he loved James Harden, man. All right, let's get the first half off with some NBA talk, which is not the NBA. It's the WNBA. That's Heading cool. into the 2023 <laughs> WNBA draft, the only thing we knew for sure that Aaliyah Boston would be the number one overall pick to the Indiana Fever. Yes, the murkiness about everything else meant that we could have you know, a little bit more chaos. Instead, everything went along with not a lot of drama. There were only one trade and very few surprising first-round selections. Mm-hmm. Let's kind of talk about some winners and some losers, guys. Any – Winners starting off, Jeff. The South Carolina basket women's basketball Spacks. program. Five picks drafted. Five, two, uh, three in the first first round. Five overall, man. Listen, I know came up short in the final four, mm-hmm. but the dynasty is there. I was and there. it's showing the way. Like, yeah. Shout out to Coach Don State. Yeah. Huh? I didn't nah, say that. I, I know that. I didn't. I didn't say we. Mm-hmm. I don't have a women's college basketball right, team. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Relax. Yeah. I Jump do. In the gun. I do. Yeah, I got UConn. UConn. Yeah, I love UConn. UConn. Yeah, come on. UConn. 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 Yeah, come on. You know, I hold. You come on. <laughs> 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 a, lot of my, a lot of my favorite players play. Man. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Any other winners? South Carolina. Listen, listen. <laughs> South Carolina. That was the best draft class. I mean, not the draft class. Uh, the best high school high class. class. You look at that. Five mm-hmm. people getting drafted from that one class. Yeah. It's tough, man. They've so, Kentucky. Yeah, they're ascending. Women's into, Kentucky. Women's Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What about UT? When has UT done that? Got five players. Yeah. They got the Michelle Snows. <laughs> oh, I see them saying. Me and Kentucky. Yeah. 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 Okay, I know That's what, what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah. No, no, he's talking nah. about men's basketball. Oh, yeah. 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 That's they what I was lost to. Yeah, yeah. they them men's. Yeah. Been, yeah, Kentucky putting in four, yeah. five pros four, and one five draft. Yeah. Four, five freshmen getting drafted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. so, yeah. Any other winners before we move on to the losers? Okay, let's move on to the losers. Give me your first loser, Jeff. Uh, this is kind of a compact answer mm-hmm. it's expansion and roster size okay mm-hmm. wasn't really talked about a lot but you look at these these young ladies who were drafted in the WNBA draft there's only there's only, there's limited spaces mm-hmm. in the WNBA right That's now it, and with the limited roster and with the limited uh teams especially with this influx of talent that we have that's coming into the league right mm-hmm. now on top of young ladies having covid years and things yeah. like that the next 2 to 3 years they gotta look in and bring us another. They team have to, yeah. Like literally, they have to. You don't have too many good to great, you know, good players that don't yeah. have a home. I yeah. mean, it happened. Yeah. Taylor Cooper is not playing in the WNBA yeah. right now. Um, Megan Walker, who played for yeah. UConn, is not playing in the WNBA right now, and they're formidable yeah. players when they go over to their overseas team and kill. Yeah, it was crazy. I seen a list of all the young ladies that were entering the draft. Yeah, the list was like a hundred people, some yeah. crazy yeah. like yeah. that, and they only taking. 36. 30, yeah, if that, yeah. Bro, like, yeah, because yeah, it's, it's only 12 teams. Yeah. With tw- Damn, bitch, we're lying. Damn. It was only 12 <laughs> teams. 12 teams yeah. with 12 ro- uh, roster spots. That's yeah. 144 people. Yeah, that's yeah. quick math, too. You know what I'm saying? That's quick math. That's yeah. good math. That's <laughs> <good math. laughs> yeah. high so, level MLK math. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. They, they could. could. It would be, it'd be yeah. successful. Because Tennessee be basketball for girls is very popular. Not Very popular. Just, just UT. Yeah. yeah. Just, just, women's just, women's just, basketball, period. Yeah, girls. Everything. High school, girls, everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, my first lose is Bree Bill, man. Four stellar seasons, like we mentioned, at South Carolina. She was supposed to be one of the top ten people drafted. She was invited to the green room. And, man, she's falling all the way. Huh? Yeah. She's flipping all the way to the 24. It's man. Tough. Silver Line, though, she's going to Minnesota. Cheryl Reeves play a lot of defense. So, you look at that, man, she'll be all right there with Diamond Miller and um, Nafisa Collier. So, yeah, UConn. Yeah. yeah, so go heavy there. But it sucks for her to fall all the way to 24. That's a steal yeah. that Minnesota got her at 24. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another loser, guys. Um, the Dallas Wings organization. Yeah, they just picking people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They had they what, six picks. Yeah. They had six picks plus all the free agents they signed. Only got 12 roster spots. That team is going to be a cluster going to the training camp. Yeah, so they, they're going to have – they had six draft picks mm-hmm. on top of their free agent signings and only have a 12 roster spots. I know I said it was a compact answer, my first answer, but yeah. this is a prime example of why expansion plus maybe one or two more roster spots for a team can help. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got no loser coach. Yeah, man. Uh, the draft ambiance so the draft room, yeah. they got to do better, man. Yeah. It looks like they're in a hotel for real. No, they yeah, definitely they were. Definitely they was definitely in the front part of the studio. Yeah, yeah like that, they got to yeah. do better, man. Like, yeah, that's this, what it this, is, like. this is getting ridiculous, man. Like, I, I know they're not as big as the NBA, and I get all that. But come on, man. This is this is these girls' dreams. You know, right. this changed some of these girls' lives, and y'all got to do better with that. Make yeah. it presentable. Not, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's not presentable. But it's supposed to be first class. It is. It's the highest level of women's basketball. Yeah. So it needs to look first class when they're doing it, man. Yeah, don't man. sell them short. No, nah, don't sell them short. That, yeah, yeah. I agree. And it, mine it has something to do with Holly Rowe. Now, Holly is one of my favorite people on ESPN. She just signed a multi-year extension. But the question she was asking those girls, it was really weird. She's just, man, hella cringy to watch. Yeah. I, they're asking for Andrea Carter to come up and be uh, Holly's person next year. She was just trying to work the room. I get that. But you also have to read the room. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know how to do that. And Holly was one of those. Great at her job. One of the best mm-hmm. at her job. But last, I mean, well, not last draft night. But night. this week, man, draft night was rough to watch, man. And she's just, I'll talk to you guys about it. It's a little rough. Yeah, man. So, Holly, read the room. All right. This is, I guess it's me, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's my guy. It's your man. This your man. All right. I've been here before. I've been here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
I like this is titled The Curious Case of Zion Williamson. So after a video of my guy Zion in layup lines pregame of the uh, Pelicans uh, playing game, mm -hmm. he's doing a uh, windmill dunks. Uh, Zion ain't played basketball since January, mm -hmm. but he's – He's doing windmills. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, former number, all, number one overall pick. Uh, willingness to return to the court has been in question. His willingness to stay in shape or lack thereof has been in question. Sure. Uh, Zion himself says he physically feels fine, um, but does not want to return to the court until he feels like Zion. Oh, man. Uh, Coach Locke. Um, what? in the world is happening with Zion Williamson. I don't think he won't be there no more. I, th I think that's – I think he's just – he's over it. You can't say that you're physically fine, but you don't want to start playing until you feel like Zion. The hell does that even mean? Right. If, you, if, you're, phys <laughs> if you're physically fine, then don't that mean you feel like Zion? Just play. Like, what are you doing, man? Like, when you're playing, your team is good. Y'all yeah. are top of the West when you're top playing. Top three team. Top three team. So yeah. what, what is the problem? Other than I could, I don't think I think of is he don't want to be there no more. Yeah. I didn't even think about him not wanting to be there, Coach. That makes sense. He might want – I heard he wants to go play with RJ. So send him on to New York. And I, I didn't even think about that. But to be out since January the 2nd, man, come on, bro. <laughs> That's a long time That's ago. bad. Don't, don't do a damn dunk contest in pregame. You know what you do? You do that damn same damn dunk contest four hours before the cameras get there. But do it in your practice facility. Do that, man. But don't do that, man, because you're antagonizing people that are watching that need the Pelicans to win. Yeah. There's a coach, man. There's there's you do his job on the his, line. Mm -hmm. yeah. He fight for his job. For his you job. got players, CJ McCullum playing with a broke. Pinky. Yeah. You got Brandon Ingram playing hurt. I mean, like this game, eighty six of the season, bro. Mm -hmm. like, people are tired, and injured, yeah, you and you doing windmills in street clothes. In street clothes, yeah. saying you feel fine. Yeah. You feel fine. Yeah. CJ McCollum's finger don't feel fine. Yeah. Dude, Willie Green is worried about his job right now. He don't feel fine. He don't feel fine, dog. Your coach's job is on the line, dog. It could be a situation where, like Coach Mitch, didn't even think about it again. He might just be forcing his way out. But if I'm the New Orleans Pelicans, I'm getting him the hell out of there because mm -hmm. you figured out that Trey Murphy can actually play. He is a starter on that team. You have pieces in B.I. C.J. McCollum's getting a little long in the two. Yeah. So yeah. you might, you know, you have Grand Theft Alvarado. Yeah. You got Herb Jones. You got J.V. You can get a piece in there, Julius Randle. I'll take Julius Randle on that team right now because you know him and B.I. are cool. They can play together. They've done it before. Mm -hmm. Give me B.I. And Julius Randle over a cat that's going to do windmills and eat Popeye's chicken and Zatarain and shit. And Dumbo. <laughs> yeah. That's his Zion's defense. He might have an eating disorder. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Oh, my for God. He, I mean, he down there doing almost all that good food, man. It is he good can't food. say no. Beignets. He can't say no. Man. Gumbo. Crawfish etouffee. Man, etouffee. Et you know? Come on, man. Po boys. You know? You know he down there eating them po boys. Crawfish. Yeah. Po man, come on, yeah. man. Man, oh, I got one more for you. Man, uh, I ain't got that. <laughs> <laughs> to Zion's defense. Okay. His GM came out today. Well, as recording was going on. He said he's hungry. <laughs> I am done. <there. laughs> <laughs> to say that Zion was never clear for five on five play or three on three in practice or anything like that. Gotta say that. Well, duh. So at the end of the day, there is there seems like there are some kid gloves being he's been playing with kid gloves here. It has is eerily similar to early Joel and B. We talked about that in pre production. Is eerily similar to old early Joel and B. If you look at it, Zion has played in more games than early Joel and B. And we see how that's turned out. Joel and B is on the precipice of winning his first MVP, well deserved this year. So you can only hope that Zion can turn it around. We don't want him to be Greg Oden. Shout out to Greg Oden. We understand what that is. Hey, is this how y'all felt when I was shooting Bill for Ben Simmons? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But this, what? Uh, this, what am I saying? Okay. This, this the thing about okay. that, What am I saying? It was wrong. This, this, this thing about that, Joe. Joel Embiid never came out and said, I feel physically fine, but I don't feel yes, like did. myself. No, yes, he, he, did. No, he, didn't say, he didn't say that part. He did. Joel, no, Nobody in NBA history said that. No, that's true. Joel Embiid said, I, um, Joel Embiid said, I feel fine, but they are holding me back. They do not want me to play. Yeah. Joel Embiid did say that. Well, though. say that. But Zion didn't say that. That's he totally he said, him. Exactly. 
You said him. I understand what you're doing because <laughs> I've done it. And shout out. And shout for out. two years, I sat right here and did the exact same thing for Ben Simmons. Let me tell you I'm glad you brought that up. You got to cut your bait. I don't know. And I did it. I'm glad yeah. you brought that and up. And I feel good. I'm glad you brought that okay. up. Okay. Shout out to my guy, P.O. He mentioned it. said, this reeks of mental health. And mental health is real. Oh, Lord. Right. Hey. 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 Mental health. Trey uh, Lightly. Trey Lightly, Cameron. Trey Lightly. Trey Lightly. Uh, Lightly. All right. Before we get started with Trey halftime, Lightly. let's talk Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans Lightly. handed out a four year contract extension worth $94 million to their star defensive tackle, Jeffrey Simmons. Now, Simmons is the second highest paid defensive tackle in the entire NFL. Jeez. Titans GM Rand Carthon of Florida Gator ensures that the Titans will have their elite defender for the long term. Guys, kick things off with you, Jeff. Mm-hmm. This is a big deal, little deal, or no deal to sign Jeff Simmons? This is a confusing slash huge deal. Mm-hmm. Here's why. Because we all the rumors on the offseason are that the Titans are blowing it up and rebuilding. Yeah. This signing says we're running it back. I don't. It does. Mm-hmm. Well, because if you Hear me out. I'm here. If, you, if you're paying him like that to be the second mm-hmm. highest paid a defensive end in the league, you're running it back. Mm-mm. You no, expect yeah. to be competitive is what Mm-mm. I'm saying. Mm-mm. No, you're, you're, just getting, you're getting one centerpiece on your defensive side of the ball. You can Because when you blow up, you, still got, you can still keep one and blow everything up. I'm with you, coach. But they haven't made any other move to blow it up. They ain't traded Derrick Henry yet. They ain't cut Tannehill yet. They they're, they're reaching out. They're going to draft a wide receiver this year. This is this is screaming. We're running this sh- so shit so back. The, the Rams just did the same thing. They got rid of Jalen Ramsey. They still have Aaron Donald. They're blowing that up though. That's, we that's, don't that's, know that. It's quite a skill. They, they're blowing I mean, up. I mean, you still. What I'm saying Stafford's is, not be the this kid's 25 years old. Now you got to pay him. Now Matthew Stafford's going to be their starting quarterback. We don't know that. 25 years old. You you build. Go ahead, coach. Um. I think this is a, a big deal, and this is the right decision for the Titans because if you don't pay him now, mm-hmm. what happens is you have other defense alignment that are close in that same elk like Quinn Williams and Dexter Lawrence who are set to get paid too. So if they get paid before him and he's going to say, well, they got $65 million, whatever it may be, I need to get $75 million. So now he's going to be able to get more money from you because – He's trying to match and get more than what these other guys have got. So that helped the Titans that they went on and got out of the way. Because mm-hmm. he's set the market now. Yep. Yeah, it is. I mean, you look at Jeff, man. He's gotten better and better every year. They got him on a first-round steal because of his injury. Each year, he's just gotten better and better every year with that defense. At 25 years old, playing his prime years in Tennessee, you have to – Lock in a guy like that. You let a generational wide receiver go, the best wide receiver you ever had in NFL history on your entire team ever. Yeah, you go and you let AJ go. You can't let that happen again. So, yeah, the reason that they got rid of AJ long term was like, we're going to have to pay Jeff next summer. Mm -hmm. So, you can't pay both of those. Like what you're saying, it's two big contracts. I think they should have kept both and built around those two guys. But now this team is built around. That guy. So he's the center stone. He's the face. You're going to see him all around the city as far as the face of the Tennessee Titans. He's getting paid like it. You have to. But the big question, guys, that I have for you, a lot of questions about the future now because you still have, like Jeff mentioned, Ryan Tannehill. You still have Derrick Henry. Christian Fulton is your cornerback one. Mm-hmm. All of those guys are free agents after this season. So what do you do? Do you get rid of all guys? Mm-hmm. And then you go into a situation where you really restart, and then you just re-sign a guy like Jeff Simmons, and he wants to play meaningful football. So you have to keep him interested as well. Mm-hmm. So, man. That's why I was saying it's a what the F. Yeah. Mm, man, it's a lot. But you have to keep generational talent. He's the second best defensive tackle in all the football. You have to pay him, Jeff. Even if you're about to blow it up, you keep you gotta, him. Yeah, you got to keep I him. I hear you. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it adds to the confusion of what – they are trying to do long term. I don't think so. Henry, Derek Henry should be in Buffalo right now. He should have been there already. He should be there getting ready. It's getting, about some trades about to happen. Preparing on his home for, you know, to be in the mafia. We got to get him initiated, get him a couple of tables. You know what I'm saying? It should already happen. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> I say go on and go. <laughs> you guys ready to get started with halftime? Let's do it. Let's get it. 
Make sure you check us out on iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, Beyond Pie, YouTube, Amazon Music, and Amazon Music. Yeah. Hey, if you got Amazon Prime, <laughs> hell yes, yeah. there too. <laughs> Make sure you do all that, all right? <laughs> and when these ads start showing, ads are free if you got Amazon Prime or Amazon Music. Make sure you pick that out. All right, to get some full archive of past episodes of FSP, just simply search for Sport Press Podcast. J-Ho. Halftime. <laughs> J Ho voice right there. We're doing something a little bit different this week, guys. Yep. You know, we, we talk sports each and every week. We're gonna try something a little bit off kilter. Let's do it. We're gonna give you all our songs of the week. Yeah. This can be from any genre, any artist, any year. Just what are you listening to this week? Yeah. Let's get it started, Coach Locke. Who you got? Let's go, Coach. Man, I went with my the good guy, rest in peace to him, Nipsey Hussle, man. Keys to the city. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. You can't know, go wrong with it. It gets me good song every time, man. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. a great song, dog. Song. Great song. So my workout Ooh. mix. Yeah, know, it is. When it comes on workout mix, it <laughs> gives me a little more through that. My dog go work out. You damn things, right. <laughs> damn right. I'll be here to pod. And my dog working out. Damn right. <laughs> and the cameraman. Cameraman, that's what I'm trying to say. Shout out to the cameraman. That was consistent. He consistent. Yeah, consistent. Yeah, consistent. He is. Consistently yeah. consistent. Shout out to right. you, dog. Yep. No time for the cameraman. Shout out to you. Get your roses, man. Get your roses. Yeah. Get flowers. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's all right. It's okay. Say ho. Yeah, man. What's your song of the week? I have um, <laughs> from the Creed 3 soundtrack, J. Cole's Adonis Interlude. Oh. It's a shorter song, but it's very relevant, boss. Yeah, yeah, hardest out, and I say that reluctantly, dog. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like so a lot of bars on that minute and forty seconds. Don't you like that? That's a good one for the for the workout. That's a good workout. Go, 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 yeah, yeah, go check, check, check it out. Yeah, yeah put it on that. Him extra. So he's gonna comment on that. He, he, he won't. He, is. he won't. Yeah, yeah. He won't. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And mine is shout out to NBA Young Boy. Mm. Featuring Nicki Minaj, what? WTF, who the who the f is what the song? Jeff, I'm listening to it right now. That's my. I've been listening all week. He said Jeff. Jeff, I've been listening to that song all week. You're, it, I met you. The reason that <laughs> that we became friends yeah. when you were a child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just brought his arises, man. No, 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 no. Yeah. Jeff is hip hop to his core. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's so, like I'm talking about boom bap, yeah. like hip hop, yeah. like Jay the Kiss. You can listen to some other Timberlands. Kind of, like to other kind of no, music. Jeff's not listening to that. Jeff's no, not listening. No, I'm listening. I like because number one, I loved. It's no. a different type of NBA young boy beat. Hell no. Sample in behind. <laughs> no. <Got laughs> Nicki on there. No. Nicki's rapping at a high Bro, level. You don't even like Nicki Minaj. That's not true. I like. I like Nicki Minaj. I like Nicki Minaj. I do like. Nicki Minaj. I like Nicki. Now, uh, I like Nicki. Okay. I, like, I, I think, know some I, people. I think Nicki's a goat. It's yeah. a people group chat. Go to what? She's top. When they put when Complex put her at top ten of all time hip hop, I did not disagree with that. No, the people. This let me tell you yeah. what Nicki Minaj is. Remember when Dr. J was playing and everybody oh, was shit, like, man, "No, no, I'm no, no, that's no, not. That's no, not going to do. It. That's no, Little no, Kim. I'm saying, not that's Little. No, Kim. you're crazy. That's Little Kim. Man, Little Kim's the goat. No, she's a goat. I'm gonna tell you why Nicki's the goat over all of them. It was nobody. There was no competition for Dr. J. On all the songs that Nicki Minaj is featured, I'm sorry, that Lil' Kim is featured on, all the songs with other male rappers on there. I'm not saying men and women can't compete. I'm just asking the question. Has, does does Lil' Kim yes. have a standout version yes. of one. Men? She has one. Mob, one. Mob Deep. Quiet Storm. Quiet Storm. Yeah. That's the one. That's yeah. two. That's the one. Benjamin's. She killed Benjamin's. Big. With Benjamin's. Beast, with a beat switch for Big, that's the one. Yeah. Benjamin's. But is, is Quiet Storm... Hot damn hole, here we go again. Fire. Better than mm-hmm. Monster. Mm. That's Monster Nikki's was only a one. career. No, it's fighting. not. Goodness, it's not. That's no. Nikki's and only one. Nikki ones. wrote it. No. Nikki hell? wrote it. Now, so you go into a situation where you go heavy on the NBA young boy, and then you're talking <laughs> about a song. <laughs> He's so just listen. run as a rise as dog. What are you saying? <laughs> he did, he, 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 check that record out. He heard the record. No, yeah, I know. I normally don't click on Young Boy. I'm not lying. Other than Lonely Child, probably my favorite NBA Young Boy song. Lonely Child, my favorite song. But yeah, when I, I clicked on that record, I said, "This is hard." Nah, I gotta listen. He got a couple. He got a couple. He got a couple. He got a couple. He got he a couple. Yeah, he do. He got a he couple. Got a couple. Yeah, he got and a couple. the kids love. Him. Oh my god, he, yeah. he's they go. Yeah, 
He is. He's their GOAT. No question. It's crazy. He's a parade in my CDA. Yeah, they, they love him. Yeah. They love him. I, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> you guys ready to get started the second half? Let's do it. Let's get it. Got merch on? What's up? Full Sport Press Podcast.com. Get your merch, get your hats, get your hoodies, get your t shirts, get your long sleeve tee. We got you covered, man. We got you covered. More stuff on the way. I always tell a friend, tell a friend <laughs> to tell a friend that we are out. <laughs> <laughs> Second half of the 2023 NBA playoff breakdown show. I am Jay Ho. It's your boy, Big Jeff. It's your man, Coach Lock. Cameraman, long last. <laughs> What do you say? What's up? Oh, shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> the 2023 NBA regular season has come to an end, and the playoffs are officially upon us. The postseason officially kicks off on Saturday after the final two play-in teams are decided Friday night for the eighth seed. First round begins with four games with a number one on Saturday and four game number ones on Sunday. Brooklyn Nets, Philadelphia 76ers open the playoffs on Saturday. We are here to break down the first round of the 2023 NBA playoffs, starting off with the Eastern Conference, the number one seed, Milwaukee Bucks, versus the number eight seed, Miami Heat. The Bucks went two and two against both potential play-in game successors. We'll kick things off with you, Jeff. The favorites to win are the Bucks plus 1,000, whoever they play. Who wins and why? Bucks win. Uh, the Miami Heat are – a veteran squad for the most part. They're a veteran-led squad, I should say that. Mm-hmm. Um, Jimmy Butler's going to give Milwaukee everything they want. It's going to be a hard-fought gentleman sweep, but that the Bucks are going to win this just because they're just too overpowering right now. Bam is going to have a tough go having to deal with Giannis and Brooke Lopez. Yeah, I see. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's going to have a tough go having to deal with both of those guys down yeah. there. And Jimmy Butler's going to do what he got to do. But to. Bam, as his, sec- as his, as his running mate, is going to have a rough time. Yep. Yeah, seven, seven. Seven. Yeah. What you got, Cole? I agree, man. A fully healthy team, neither one of these teams would have a chance to beat them. But with Chris Milton being out, Grayson Allen and Pat Content being injured a little bit, that could come into play because it'll be lack of depth for the Bucks. But even with that being said, they still are going to win a series. It's, it's nothing – that the Miami Heat will be able to do to win a series unless Jimmy Butler goes completely nuts. Which he did tonight. I don't think he'll be able to do it, though, because if he gets like that, they'll put Giannis on him and he'll slow that down. Yeah. So I, I got the Bucks going. <laughs> yeah. Put a big joke out right there. Yeah. Giannis, <laughs> get him. <laughs> yeah. um, with two days off in between games one and three, everybody on the Bucks team should be a little bit more healthier than they are as we record the show. The, this is the thing about the Heat. They underachieved the entire year, guys. They had higher hopes coming into yes. the season, adding in Kyle Lowry. You also have a, a new and improved paid Tyler Hero, and it just never really put it together. UD is on the bench upset, screaming, <laughs> cursing. Um, yeah, they made at least the Eastern Conference Finals in the it's last two <laughs> postseasons. <laughs> so that, that talent and depth that you guys speak of, I think it'll be hard for the Heat to overcome that. I got the Bucks winning in five as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving right along to the four or five seed, the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the New York Knicks. The Knicks won the season series three to one, guys. Favorites to win the Cavs are minus two oh five to win. Coach, who wins and why? The X fact in this is gonna be Julius Randle's ankle injury. Mm-hmm. If he's gonna be limping around and not able to play like himself, I think it'd be too much for the Knicks to overcome. Even having Jalen Brunson who does have the playoff experience from last year and R.J. Barrett. You know, Cleveland, they allowed the fewest points per game in the NBA during the regular season when they were dominant on that end of the floor doing that. That being said, they vulnerable on the glass. You know, they had difficult times scoring unless Donovan went off like he did those three, four games in a row. We had those 40-plus points. Um, I think Donovan Mitchell is going to have a monster series, though, and I think the Cavs are going to pull this one out. Mm, and how many? Um, it's going to go seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay. You got Jeff. I think Cleveland is the second most uh, disrespected team in these playoffs. People are really giving the Knicks a shot at beating them. Mm-hmm. I don't see it. Um, even healthy, I don't see the Knicks doing this. I have Cleveland in six because Donovan Mitchell is the better, is the best player on the court, on either on either side. 
And even if you think Jalen Bronson is up there with Donovan Mitchell, they cancel each other out, right? Julius Randle is going to have a tough time dealing with the gentleman down low that he has to deal with Evan Mobley and um, Jared, Allen. Jared Allen. The X Factor is Darius Garland. He got playoff experience last year. He's seen what it's like. He's coming back this year. He wants revenge. Cavs and six. Cavs and six. All right, so like Coach mentioned, Julius Randle's ankle is the X Factor. Mm-hmm. He's not 100% or close to 100%. They lose in five. Mm -hmm. But Donovan Mitchell, everybody was ready for him to transition to go here, and they have a formidable backcourt that doesn't play any defense. Then they're taking away shots from Evan Mobley as far as his trajectory. I think he could be the next Chris Bosh. Like, he's that good. And Donovan Mitchell, I think he slows down everything that the Cavs can do. So, in turn, I have the Knicks winning this in six. They, I just think the Knicks are deeper. They added, um, what's my guy's name, Josh uh, Hart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They still have That's Quick coming people. off the bench. Um, and then Mitchell Robinson is going to give trouble to whatever Jared Allen has to do. Mm-hmm. I think they cancel each other out. I think the Cavs face a little bit more pressure than the Knicks. The Knicks are playing with, with house money. Nobody is expecting the Knicks to do anything, period, just in life. Now, in terms <laughs> that people want the Knicks, basketball is better when the Knicks are good, guys. Madison Square looks great. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is the pressure, though, is on Cleveland, though. Yeah. So I got the Knicks winning in six. Mm. All right. Moving right along to the next seed. It's the 3 6 seed. The Philadelphia 76 is versus the number six seed. Brooklyn Knicks. The Sixers won the season series four to shit. <laughs> Favorites to win. The Sixers are minus 800. Jeff, who wins and why? Ah, man. The Sixers win this one. Uh, but the Nets are reminding me of that team that looked like uh, with D'Angelo Russell was mm-hmm. the point guard. That Spencer did Car- It did shitty. <laughs> Karis LeVert. Mm-hmm. They're reminding me of that squad. Like, they're just – they play rough. They play tough. Yeah. Mikael Bridges, you pointed out. I give you props on that. He's a bucket, right? Um, they, they are ready to roll. They're going to give Philadelphia everything they want. Every game is going to be close. It's going to be a gentleman's sweep, though. Mm. Every game is going to be called. Shout out to DP. I know he's listening. Yeah. He said the Nets won't make the playoffs. Yeah, he should he did. He mm. said yeah, he should they held on to that spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, for sure. I know he listened. I know yeah. he listened. Yeah. He crazy he for listened. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, moving right along. Coach, what you got? Man, I think this is going to be closer than what people think. Just like Jeff said, I guess they have, have it going one more game. I think the Sixers will pull this one off 4-2. You know, mm-hmm. Mikael Bridges and Cameron Johnson, they have that playoff experience, and they'll lead them to, you know, a few close games. But Joel Embiid and James Harden, they're going to be too much at the end of the day. So I have the 76ers winning this series 4-2. Okay. to We've been anticipating this net Sixers playoff series since James Harden forced his way out. Brooklyn saw traded for Ben Simmons 14 months ago. But this series won't include anybody but James Harden, which is insane, man. Joel Embiid be the clear best player in this series. And, you know, with James Harden, he's getting back healthy. He has a lot to prove. He's playing for a contract. And on top of that, he's playing for a reputation. This is his resume. This is a – do James Harden in the playoffs? Non-existent. Non-existent, man. Little baby's there, and he gets nervous oh, when the little Lord. baby's there. So <laughs> I think I think we sell it up short. He had that, that game with the Nets where he played hurt. Historically, though. Historically, though, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you have to – you know, I mean, right. yeah. a good series or two, you, yeah. yeah, that ain't going to shape your – your entire resume. Okay. But Nick Claxton, man, he has a length to kind of bother and beat. I think they'll win a game. But my guy, Mikael Bridges, he'll have a 40-point game in this series. Easy. Mm-hmm. He will go for 40. Easy. The Nets just got a lot of players that's just not ready to play. Like you guys mentioned, just not a lot of playoff experience other than Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson. And they didn't have leadership roles in that. They were role players mm-hmm. at the time. So I just think, man, this is a time. Yeah, very scrappy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're not a strong six seed that you normally thought that they would be if they were Brooklyn, how we thought they were going to be. So, yeah, Claxton is enough, but not enough. I got the Sixers winning in five, maybe four. Mm. All right. The last in the Eastern Conference, we have the number two seed, the Boston Celtics, versus the number seven seed, Atlanta Hawks. The Celtics won the season series 3 0. Celtics are favored by minus 1,200. Jeff, this is your team. So let's kick things off with you. Uh, <laughs> haven't heard a lot of Shaq. Yeah, yeah, you and Shaq. You and Shaq. Oh, oh. You and Shaq. Here's the thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here, we, Here go. we go. Here we go. Here we go. Iso Ojel. Hawks and seven. 
<laughs> Here's why. Put it on the ball. Nah. Here's no. In all, in all seriousness, Hawks and seven. You see what I'm saying when I say about dudes? Boston. Right. Now nah, hear me out. Boston is by far the superior team. Boston is also, depending on Robert Williams coming back healthy, he's not. Jalen Brown is not healthy. He's not. Jason Tatum is not 100% healthy. Let's be honest. If you want to play Boston, this is the time to do it. Trey is battle-tested in the playoffs. DeJounte Murray is a solid enough player to be his running mate in these playoffs. He's the best player on the team. Jay. That ain't true. <laughs> but at the end of the day, playing them right now, I'm, I'm going to use this line again later on too, playing them right now makes the most sense. If you're going to beat Boston, this is the series to do it. If the Hawks can split one and two, they split, if they win game one or game two, they win the series in seven. Book it. Oh, God. Coach, what you got, man? <sighs> It, Jeff. It, it's not really how. If you it's, really, if you really take away, if you really look at it from how Boston is playing right now, this isn't Boston when they go and they run a rush out of the league beginning of the season in the middle of the season. This is Boston limping into the playoffs. They are in. They are. They are injured. Robert Williams, one hundred percent healthy, Jeff. Mm-mm. Yes, he is, Jeff. It's the first time he's been one hundred percent healthy all year. Hear me out. I'm saying. Now, Jalen Brown has the hand injury. We don't know. They say he broke it on. I mean, cut it with broken glass. We don't know. That's true. That's one person. But that's a major cog in that team. Bro. But that's not Al Horford. <laughs> Let him go, man. <laughs> I, bad, I just don't see the Hawks be able to pull this off. Yes, the offense has been potent since Quinn Snyder. You know, when they played the Celtics season, they did dominate the offensive glass. But Boston's just going to be too much. Jason Tatum is not going to let them lose his series. If he has to carry them himself for those four games, he's going to do that. Yeah. The, the Celtics, don't, they don't have any weak spots, either offensively or defensively. You know, they execute well on both ends of the floor. I don't see them being able to pull this series out. I got Boston in a gentleman's sweep 4-1. Yeah, there's too much going on in the Atlanta locker room. After every postseason game, they ask Trey, you have a lot of adversity. We just want to make sure you're doing okay. He has to answer that every game. He not, he's not, dog, this is, listen, Robert Williams is 100% healthy. It's a Christmas miracle in April. This is the first time he's ever been healthy going into the playoffs. He started 20 games this year. They were 15 and 5. He's the X factor of that yes. team. Yes. Jalen Brown is trying to nurse his hand back to 100%. Come on, Coach. Come on, Coach. What did you, what, what you think, bro? Come on, Coach. You've been, you, you been out the loop. No, I'm trying to get to my one. I was looking for one of my things. In it. Ooh, the Celtics, though, they get in trouble when they don't take their opponent seriously. So, Jeff, I think that they will maybe win a game um, – not at home. Maybe in Atlanta. I think the Atlanta will slide in and get a game at home. But, man, there's no way. It's, they were happy to play Atlanta. They don't have – they just don't match up. This is the deepest team that the Celtics have ever had. They have a guy on their team, Peyton Pritchard, who doesn't play because Malcolm Brogdon is so good and Derek White is playing so well that he can't even get on the floor. And he can go and get 20 points a game if he gets warm. So, yeah, man, plenty of bullets and board material for the Hawks. They have a new coach. They have a new system that they're learning, and they're playing well under Quinn Snyder, but this ain't it, man, season five. All right, let's move on to the Western Conference. We have the Denver Nuggets. I said Nuggets. Nuggets. The, the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> wow. I was going to say the Denver Nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because it ain't that. Um, <laughs> moving on to the Western Conference. We have the Denver Nuggets versus the OKC Thunder or the Minnesota Timberwolves. The season series against the Nuggets, 3-1 versus OKC. And the Nuggets were two and two with the T Wolves. Favorites to win minus one thousand versus Minnesota. Minus five hundred guys against OKC. Yeah. Coach Lock, who wins and why? The Nuggets. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I said Nuggets. I, Nuggets. I told you. I told you. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it? Why? I told Where you. I I getting it from? What the hell? No. Now you see how? Golly, the Nuggets are going to win this series regardless of who they play. Yeah. SJ has been playing out of his mind this season, but their lack of depth and stars are going to be too much to overcome. You know, I originally thought that the Wolves would lose. They might lose if they got matched up with them, but now that Anthony Edwards is injured, we don't really know what that is. I think he's downplaying more than what it is. Their shoulders bother him. I don't see them being able to beat the Nuggets if he's not <laughs> healthy. 
I don't think it'll be enough. Cat won't be enough to beat them. So whoever wins, the Nuggets are gonna win the series four one. Yeah, the in, the injury to Anthony Edwards kind of puts a sour note on this because I would have loved to see fully healthy Minnesota all year and definitely in the playoffs. Um, so that being said, playing against OKC, OKC plays with, gets so, with so much confidence as a young they team. They, they're not afraid of this moment, but I do think they're going to – eventually the underdog realizes they're the underdog, right? Yeah. So I got Denver in four against OKC. Four very competitive games, but four. And I have Denver with a dinged up Anthony Edwards in five against Minnesota. Oh, man. Uh, this is the most overrated, underrated team that I've ever watched play. The Denver Nuggets, man. It's oh. just tough, man. It, <laughs> whew, man, it's tough. But this is the team. The team that they want to play is clearly the Timberwolves. Another team with locker room problems. Weird stuff going on. Probably going to have to revamp the team again, build around Ant. But nobody wants to play the OKC Thunder. Like Jeff mentioned, they are super confident. They play real young boy, wild, hungry, just up and down the floor, don't care. They be dressing weird. They just trying to get to it. <laughs> yeah, but Denver, man, they finished the year 8-10. Their final 18 games. Yeah. It's a short – Run, but that's not a exactly. short period of time. That shows a lot. Yeah. You were getting everybody rolling. I get Michael Porter Jr., my guy, is healthy. Jamal Murray is finally healthy. You have a two-time MVP. Listen. It was a little dinged up at the end of the year. It's not good. It yeah. should mean something if you have all those guys coming back with Aaron Gordon playing his best basketball. Yeah. They're finally facing pressure to deliver. Watching a guy that won some MVPs. It was up for a third. It is up for a third. Shit. Let's see what he does when the pressure's on him. Let's see. I think he'll play well because he doesn't care. He just wants to ride horses. He don't care nothing about basketball. Basketball is his second love. He loves horses. So in turn, this shit don't matter to him. His they brothers are – never mind. Don't you – Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I ain't put no smoke right. on that. Right. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. Bring in some, <laughs> some backup. Yeah, but um, I got – hey, listen. They'll sweep the hell out of the Timberwolves for sure. Mm. But if they play – okay, see, okay, see, going to win one. Okay. They'll win one. I can respect that. Yeah. Okay. I can respect that too. Right. Yeah, we'll right. put that on the board. Um, <laughs> on the, moving on to the next one, four or five seed. We have the Phoenix Suns versus the Los Angeles Clippers. Season series is 2-2. The Suns are favorite minus 500. Jeff, who wins and why? All right. If you're going to play a team with a new addition, you want to play them early. You want to mm-hmm. play them early. Phoenix looks unbeatable with Kevin Durant. They really do. I said it last week on our closeout of the uh, – Top five play, uh, teams of the week and all that. Clippers in seven. Clippers, mm. are deep. Clippers are deep. They have weapons off the bench. They have players. They have Norman Powell. They have uh, they have a Bones that's rounding into play. They got Russ, playoff Russ. They got Kawhi. Paul George is not playing. They got uh, Zubak in the middle. Like they, they are. They have guys to come in to rotate out. The thing about Phoenix is they have four. They have first of all they have. Three Hall of Famers, three already Hall of Famers. They got Devin Booker, Chris Paul, one of the greatest point guards ever, Kevin Durant, one of the top players of all time. And they got DeAndre Ayton. But after that, it gets a little thin. They can't play every minute of every game, right? So if, you get, if you're going to play them, you want to play them now. I think Clippers have enough bench-wise to get them fits. And in seven games, I'm going with Kawhi. Mm. You got coach. Um... <laughs> Jeff is correct. They the Clippers are far deeper than the Suns are as far as players that they can bring in off the bench. But Phoenix is going to win this series in six games. We saw the the Clippers struggle against the Suns last week, and the Suns didn't play any of their starters. And the Clippers were still playing for something because they were trying to avoid the playing game, and they still struggled. Now, like you said, the Suns undefeated when KD plays. I just don't see the Clippers being able to pull off this series against the Suns the way the Suns are playing right now. So give me the Suns in six. Yeah. This is a tough first-round matchup for the Clippers, man, especially with PG not being 100%. I don't think he plays a game. The biggest strength that they have with the Clippers is death, like Coach mentioned. They got wings for days. Wings stop. But (laughs) when the Clippers, what makes them so deep was the fact that they had Paul George and all of those wings. With him missing, it's a lot of pressure now on those wings, Rob Covington, Norman Powell, and Kawhi Leonard, to do more. And that's more pressure on Kawhi. And Kawhi isn't – that's a 
It's an older guy. He's not a young guy. This isn't Jamal Murray. This isn't, you know, like one of those young guys that's coming back off an injury that still has young legs. Kawhi's been injured a lot over the last four years. So so it's Kevin Durant, though. Yeah, but he's but you also have Devin Booker, who's the best shooting guard. So you have the best shooting guard, you have the best small forward, and the Hall of Fame point guard. Like, it, this should be – this should be easy. I think that fit with Chris Paul and Devin Booker and Kevin Durant came into a situation where it's gelled perfectly, mm-hmm. super cohesive. I didn't have much faith in them with Paul George. I have zero faith in them without him. I got the Suns winning in five, if that. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Moving right along to the number three seed, mm-hmm. Sacramento Kings versus number six seed, the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors won the season series 3-1. The Warriors are favored to win minus 280. Insane, guys. Who wins and why, Coach? This series is going to be a lot closer than people think. Mm-hmm. The Warriors are supposed to get Andrew Wiggins back. The Kings kind of remind me of the, the OKC Thunder, the way they play. They're young. They're gifted. They're hungry. And we know the Warriors have had their road struggles all year. But all they have to do to get back home court is just win one game. Just one game, and it takes them back to home court advantage, whether we know the Warriors are great at home. With the Kings' lack of playoff experience, they only have Darren, De'Aaron Fox, my guy, and Sabonis have 13 combined playoff games between the two of them. I just think that's going to come back to hurt the Kings, and I think the Warriors win this in six. Because if they mess, if the Kings can mess around and make this go seven, the Warriors could be in trouble. Yeah, they're in trouble. Yeah. But I think the Warriors will win that one road game and finish it out at home in game six, not going back to Sacramento. So here's the most disrespected team in the NBA playoffs, the Sacramento Kings. Uh, everybody was positioning themselves to play them in the first round. <laughs> this is who you wanted. If you could pick who, if you could pick your team, you wanted to play Sacramento. In Denver. No, nah, people were positioning to play Sacramento. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't get up that. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah, for sure. But you could have lost to get to eighth. Yeah, but I'm yeah, telling you. You could have lost to get to eighth. Yeah, right? I think the Lakers would rather play them than they play in Memphis. Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah, well, Lakers, Lakers would rather play Sacramento than anybody. They didn't mm. want to play Memphis or. They would much rather play Memphis. I mean, they would much rather play Denver than they would play Memphis. That's neither here nor there. Okay. But I got you. So, Sacramento is going to win this series in six games. Give the ball to Sabonis and get out of his way. I understand De'Aaron, De'Aaron Fox is going to get buckets. I understand it. I get it. It's cool. Um, Malik Monk is going to help you out. Buddy Hill is going to – I'm not Buddy Hill, but um, uh, Harrison Barnes is going to do what he can do. <laughs> get a ball to Sabonis. Let him be Jokic. And give the ball to Sabonis and dictate your offense. He needs to put up at least 15 to 20 shots a game. Instead of his 10 to 12 that he's shooting, or 10 to 14 he's doing right now. And that's how you win this series. You are disrespected. Like the beam. And let's go. Like the beam. Like the fucking beam. <laughs> Here's the thing about the Kings, though. So – you said <laughs> Sabonis needs more shots. He can't Sabonis score a hundred. He can't he, score a hundred. But he needs he needs to be able to score 20, 20 plus. <laughs> he doesn't shoot enough. To, he he's, he's he's shooting sixty percent from the field. Yeah. He don't shoot enough. Yeah, no, that's well, that ain't gonna start in the playoffs. Well, that's, that's you ain't even played in number six it. games of playoff experience. <laughs> but the Kings are disrespected, Jeff. I do appreciate you saying that. High level. They got a bad draw though, dog. They got a real bad draw. You're going against a team that just came off a championship. Mm -hmm. You bring back your best defensive player on the wing, and then you trade it for your best wing defender. And then you also have DiVincenzo to guard those wings as well. So the Warriors ended the season in decent form. They were 8-2. and Now, don't look at the teams they played, but you still got to win those games. They were 8-2. That's true. I think the defense that the Warriors played in those last 15, 20 games – showed and it resembled some of the playoff stuff that we saw last year. And on top of that, too, this team gets hot at the right time. They can beat anybody in this entire playoffs. So I got the Warriors winning maybe in five, but I six for sure. I just think it's a really bad draw for Sacramento. And on top of that, it'll be a learning experience mm-hmm. for them to, you know, maybe – put themselves in a better situation next year, and they'll have more experience. But this is a team on the rise. If they can get rid of HB and maybe add in, you know, a younger wing, they can really do some trouble. But this ain't the year to do that. Just got to yeah. feed some bonus, man. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Man. Right there. <laughs> that ain't enough, They bro. can't do nothing with them. Yeah, some bonus. Yeah, yeah they can. Nah. Uh-uh. Nah. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> Who the hell go guard still, bro? No, nobody on their wing. Wait, wait, wait. wait. We're we going to do that. That's that's You said like anybody in the league. Who going to guard still? Yeah, no, you gotta I'm just saying. Go. You got to yeah, yeah. write that in. Write them 30. Yeah, hope them 30. It, just hope you don't go for 50. Yeah, that's, that's true. all you can do. I got you. Yeah. 
And our last matchup, uh, matchup in the West, we have the number two seed, the Memphis Grizzlies. Big Memphis Big. versus number Memphis. seven seed, Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers won the season series two to one. The Grizzlies are favorite, minus 136. Mm. Jeff, who do you have winning and why? It's a parade in my city. Oh, yeah, dude. Grizzlies in five. Wow. Oh, five. Mm. five. Mm. At the end of the day, I get it. Lakers are a very sexy pick. At the day, has been playing a tremendous. LeBron is as healthy as LeBron gonna be at this stage in his career. Let's mm-hmm. be honest. Mm-hmm. And they made trades to get bench, get bench help. If you watch that playoff, get that playing game against Minnesota, you should be frightened if you are a Lakers fan. Because what in the hell are you gonna do with John Moran? Nothing. Big Memphis in five. <laughs> Huge Memphis <laughs> in five. You mm-hmm. got coach. We know LeBron and AD are going to be able to attack the rim. They're going to do what they do. Austin Reeves has stepped up. Mm-hmm. He's played himself into getting a nice little contract, not with the Lakers, unless they decide to pay him. They have more experience as a team in the playoffs. True. We know they have that. But like Jeff mentioned, I'm worried about the Lakers' defense. They can do it for a half. We know that. They showed that. I don't know if they can do it for a whole game for four games. Because LeBron doesn't play defense anymore. Yeah, 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 He doesn't. And when he does, he's worn out. Yeah. Also, I still can't trust that Anthony Davis is going to stay healthy. Yeah, he's one pinky away from being hurt. I'm going to go with the Grizzlies to win this series 4-3. <laughs> so, all right. So, I'm going to talk to Jeff first. Jeff said, yeah, who they going <laughs> to give me. John Morant ended the season playing terrible. He hasn't played good since he's came back from his situation. That's not the John Morant that we saw, and it won't be the John Morant this playoffs. But if he goes and you said, oh, who's going to stop him? Okay, give him his 30. Who the hell else is going to score the rest? Desmond Bain? Jaron Jackson? So here's the thing about this team. The birth of a superstar in Jaron Jackson. (laughs) Here's the thing, though, about teams like this. So Brandon Clark, the energy guy, Mm -hmm. the defender. He's out for the year towards Achilles. Yes. Then you have your anchor on defense, Steven Adams. Mm-hmm. He's gone yeah. for the rest of the playoffs. That's we won't see him this playoffs. That sucks. It's huge. That's huge. That's huge. Guess who's fully healthy the first time all year? Mm-hmm. The Los Angeles Lakers, man. Mm-hmm. Just about for the first time this season. Mm-hmm. Two of the top rebounding teams in the entire NBA. But two of the worst three-point teams shooting-wise in the entire NBA. So neither one of them shoot well from three. That's true. The X factor is John Morant, and he hasn't played well since he's came back. Now, they said he has a little injury, whatever the case may be. I don't know. But just not the same player. I assume it's stress-related. The Lakers, with the experience, with the – with the je ne sais quoi that the Lakers <laughs> have. Pedigree. Yeah. yeah. You think that they don't want LeBron James playing in these playoffs? Of course. The call is going to be made for two teams. If he get ugly for Golden State, a call is getting made for Golden 100%. State. hundred percent. And if he gets ugly for the Lakers er, like early in the series, a call is going to get made for the Lakers. We know that. Uh, yeah. We know that. But I think Memphis has enough to overcome that. Lakers in seven. Mm. Mm. One time for Kenneth Lofton. <laughs> Husky Nation. He, he won't play a game. I'm just saying one time for him. He won't play a game. Yeah, he's he not going to play. He, he won't play a game. He not gonna play. He not. He won't see the floor. Yeah. He won't see the floor. Nah. He not gonna get three minutes. No. Shout out to him. Though. He might get some some garbage minutes when it's you know yeah. when it's a parade time. It's parade in my city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, it's gonna be a short. I'm telling you, John Moran not. No. But that is our recap for the 2023 NBA playoffs. Mm-hmm. Fun, mm-hmm. fun exercise, mm-hmm. guys. All the time. Yeah. Uh, spicy. It's some spicy. Coach, I can't believe you. What? Man, I can't believe <laughs> what I do. <laughs> Look, you think the Grizz? Hey man, I, just, I don't. I get it though. I, I understand. I, I don't trust it. the Lakers' defense. Now, they ain't, this is the thing. No matter. We'll you said about. the Lakers are healthy for the first time. This first year. time that can change in six minutes. You it know can. That. It can change for any you know. team, though. But it's more than right likely to change for them. The Lakers, Going into the game, this is the first time this team has been fully healthy, and that's great to see. That's good to great see. To see. Yeah, it's hard. But man, it's like Brady, Minnesota's dog. one. Minnesota's one. Anthony Edwards injury away from them having from the Lakers having to having to be an AFC, having nah, to beat they, OKC. Now nah, Minnesota lost that game. The Lakers didn't beat them. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. Minnesota but, lost that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Him hurt. He was hurt. You could tell Anthony Edwards was not the same. Yeah, man. Yeah. The worst pick of the day. <laughs> those damn Hawks, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> that hog pick is in this. <laughs> You you sure you don't want to write that on? The no, board? I'll write it down. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. It's going to be, I think it's going to be a lot more competitive than now. Right. Find you, Boston is superior. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, you Boston, said yeah, that. So how you pick them? <laughs> because it come. Because no, it, it had, oh, no. honestly, truth be told, oh, if, it was, if it was Miami or or as long as it won Chicago, no disrespect, as long as it won Chicago or what was the other Eastern um, uh, playing team? Chicago, Toronto. I, they they could not. Uh, hang with Boston, but if I had Miami or Atlanta being able to give Boston a series, I really do. Seriously, seriously, I can't give them a series. They're gonna beat what, you. Okay, what do you define giving a series? Six games. Five is giving a series. No, it's a gentleman's okay, sweep. So six games. They're six six games. Games. It's gonna be six games. Trey, Trey gonna do that. Tweet us the questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to come in, <laughs> give us a thumbs up on the <laughs> YouTube page, on the iTunes page. Please rate and subscribe. But more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. To tell a friend. Code lock. Get a drummer song. Jeff. Camera's always on, brother. Cameraman, the revolution will be podcasted. We are out. Thank you for listening to the Full Sport Press podcast. To catch up on previous episodes, please check out the YouTube page and wherever you find your favorite podcast. Don't forget, tell a friend to tell a friend. The revolution will be podcasted.